Hello, MPLI. This episode in the Nahuatl for Aztec Religion series will look further into nouns, namely important lessons on two of their most common suffix sets. The noun suffixes in this episode will be focused on two cases, the absolutive and possessed forms, in both singular and plural. They may look daunting at first, but this video will show how basic ideas about Nahuatl consonants and vowels will make them easier to learn. In the spirit of the series, we will even use several examples from the Aztec supernatural world, including the shape-shifting Nahuali and one of the most important names of Tezcatl y Epoca. Even a casual glance at the Nahuatl language would reveal a good number of words ending in tl, tli, or li. These are suffixes that mark a noun's absolutive form. Absolutive means that a Nahuatl noun takes subject prefixes and suffixes, similarly to intransitive verbs, verbs without objects. Returning to an example from the last episode, let's compare the singular and plural forms for the noun tlacatl, person, and the verb nemi, walk. Ti tlacatl, you are a person. An tlaca, you all are people. Ti nemi, you are walking. An ne nemi, you all are walking. Notice how the noun and verb receive similar prefixes and suffixes for person and number. The plural sets are identical here. The noun and verb take the same prefixes and a glottal suffix. We will return to verbs in the next episode. A fully formed noun in Nahuatl always has at least three parts. A subject prefix, the noun root, and some type of suffix. It may also take additional prefixes, suffixes, or other attachments, but the first three are minimally required. We find all three from our recent example, ti tlacat. T marks the second person singular subject. Tlaca is the noun root for person, and the tl is the singular absolutive suffix. Set together, the noun's components make a full sentence. Ti tlacat, you are a person. For most Nahuatl nouns, the root's final letter determines the absolutive suffix form, and this follows three general rules. 1. If the root ends in a vowel, the suffix is tl. E-e-katl, wind. Siwat woman. 2. If the root ends in a consonant, the suffix is tli. This may remind you of the syllable rule stating that Nahuatl doesn't like a consonant cluster at the start or end of a syllable. So it will add a vowel, typically the e, to break it up. A moshtli, book. Eatli, obsidian. Osomatli, monkey. Three. If the noun root ends in an l, the tli will assimilate to li, because kopali is easier to say than kopaltli. Kopali, incense. Tonali, calendar day sign. I have a quick aside on rule two. Although most consonant final noun roots take the tli suffix with the e at the end, a few exceptions insert the e before the tl. Kwawit, wood, tree. Shiwit, turquoise, year, leaf. So just be aware that these cases exist. Before we turn to plurals, I said these three rules apply to most nouns because Nahuatl also has a special case of in for certain animals and other animate beings in nature. Michin, fish. Totolin, turkey. Sitlalin, star. Nouns that can be marked for plural take one of the following three main forms. Glottal, me, din. The rules deciding which form to use are loose, and some words can even take one or another, such as me shi'tin or me shi'ka. But four trends guide the plural patterns. 1. Inanimate, collective nouns do not mark for plural and therefore do not change the suffix. Tamali, tamales. Et, beans. 2. Noun roots for animals, spirits, and other animate beings take me. Tsitsimit. Tsitsimime, a type of malicious spirits. Tsinakantli, Tsinakanme, bats. 3. Consonant final noun roots receive tin. Kali, Kaltin, houses. Komali, 
Comaltin, Comal grills. Four, and nouns related to people are often pluralized with the glottal uh. Siwat, Siwa, women. Pochtekat, Pochteka, merchants. Some nouns are pluralized with reduplication, which typically repeats the first syllable and lengthens the first vowel. Kowat, Kokowa, serpents. Teot, Teteo, spirits or gods. Nawali, Na Nawaltin, shape shifting Nawalis. The final set for this episode are the suffixes used to mark when a noun is possessed. If you watched the last episode in this playlist, you may remember the genitive pronoun prefix, which is used to mark possession. The noun therefore requires at least this prefix to mark who possesses the object, and at least a suffix to mark that the object is the thing being possessed. Nawat has three suffixes for the possessed noun, and the general rules are easy because they follow patterns for sound and number. 1. If the noun root is singular and ends in a consonant, the suffix is null. This means that the suffix position is occupied, completing the noun form, but nothing is pronounced. My tamali thus takes the no prefix and drops the li suffix to say no tamal, my tamale. Same with no mich, my fish. 2. If the noun root is singular and ends in a vowel, the suffix is h. Istat is salt. And to say my salt, we replace the absolute of t suffix with the hu to show its possession. Also notice that the e at the start is weak, so it is dropped when it receives the no prefix. My salt is then pronounced no stau. Another example is shotik, flower. To say my flower, we replace the t suffix with hu for the flower possession. And the no prefix indicates that it is mine, no shotiu. And three, if the possessed noun is plural, the suffix is wan, regardless of the root's final letter. My komal grills are then no komal wan. Let's return to the noun tlakat, which means man or person. His or her person then adds the e prefix to mark third person singular genitive. And the noun root, which ends in a vowel, replaces the tl suffix with hu. E tlakau. To say his or her people, we must change the suffix from hu to wan to show that the noun is plural. This entire word could be said as a full sentence when you remember that the third person subject prefix is null and therefore not pronounced. However, other plural subject prefixes can replace it, such as the t for the first person plural we. With this prefix, we form ti tla kawan, we are his people one of the most important nicknames of the god Tezcat y Epoca. These rules for noun possession also apply to exceptions that will be discussed in episodes ahead. The next episode will introduce one of the most important foundations to understanding the Nahuatl language, the verb. Join us for the following installment. <laughs>